Father Lord, we just want to thank you for this time, Almighty God, O oh Lord. We just want to commit this time as well, Father God, into your hands. Oh, Jehovah God, O oh Lord, we are here, Jehovah God. May you empty us, Jehovah God, O oh Lord, so that we can be filled, oh Jehovah God, with what you have in um what you've planned for us this wonderful afternoon, this wonderful and sunny day, oh Jehovah God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we've prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I would like to start off by thanking God. Je veux commencer en remerciant le Seigneur. I just want to thank God for just giving me this opportunity for uh, me to be used as his vessel. Je veux remercier le Seigneur pour cette opportunité d'être là cet après-midi. And I would also love to um, thank and I would also like to thank um, the leadership. Je veux and remercier aussi les dirigeants for also giving me this opportunity as well. De m'avoir donné cette opportunité aussi. Alléluia. And I would also mm-hmm. like to wish all the women in um, on the line. Et je voudrais aussi saluer toutes les femmes en ligne. A happy Women's Day. Je voudrais vous souhaiter une bonne fête des femmes. It's really such an honor. C'est vraiment un honneur. To be given such an opportunity on such a wonderful day to be uh, to be celebrating all the women. De pouvoir célébrer les femmes en un, 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 un si beau jour. Amen. Amen. And I do believe, um, oh yes, my name is Norma, and I'm pretty sure for other people when they heard my full name, they were like, oh, who is this? Mon nom est Norma. Je suis sûr que quand les gens ont entendu mon nom, ils étaient étonnés. Yes, and um, today, together with my sister, Sister Marielle. Aujourd'hui avec ma soeur Marielle. We'll be sharing the word of God this afternoon. Nous allons partager la parole de Dieu cet après-midi. And this year, the year of 2020. Cette année 2020. As a church, we've been on a quest. We've been on a quest as a church. Nous avons été en quête en tant a quest, a, um, a quest to holiness. La quête de la sainteté. And I do believe that we've been learning so much. Et je crois que nous avons appris tellement de choses. From the beginning of the year up to this very moment. Depuis le début de l'année jusqu'à présent. Just to name a few of the topics that we have already covered. Juste pour nommer quelques sujets qu'on a déjà eu à faire. Is um, salvation the gateway to holiness? Nous avons eu le salut qui est la porte à la sainteté. Re- uh, renewal of the mind. Le renouvellement de l'intelligence. Sanctification through the word. La sanctification à travers la parole. Sanctification through the spirit. La sanctification à travers le Saint Esprit. Abiding in uh, abiding in Christ. Demeurer en Christ. Amen. And today Amen. we're going to be sharing on denying self. Aujourd'hui nous allons partager sur renoncer à soi-même. Amen. And I'm pretty sure that we've heard this topic being mentioned before. Et je suis sûr que nous avons déjà entendu parler de ce sujet. Yes, someone also added imputed holiness through Christ. Thank you very much. Et quelqu'un a ajouté la société la sainteté imputée. Merci. Amen. So Amen. without um, having to take much of your time, as we are also uh, running against time. Nous sommes uh, à bout de temps, donc nous allons continuer. We are going to jump into the sermon for today. Donc nous allons aller dans le sujet d'aujourd'hui. All right. So we're going to be uh, we're going to start off by defining the two words defining self. Nous allons commencer en définissant les deux mots. First as separate and then as together. Nous allons les définir séparément et après ensemble. Denying means refusing to give or grant something requested or desired to someone or something. On note désigne refuser de donner ou d'accorder quelque chose demandé ou désiré à quelqu'un ou à quelque chose. Self is an individual's typical character or behavior. Et soi-même, c'est un caractère ou un comportement typique d'un individu. So I think already we have sort of an idea what both of the words uh, put together mean. Donc je pense qu'on a une idée de ce que les deux mots ensemble veulent se signifier. Just to have a summary from the definitions already given from the two separate words. Juste pour avoir un résumé des deux définitions séparées. It means to refuse to give in to whatever desired. Ça, ça signifie de refuser de donner quelque chose de désiré. By the individual's typical character. Par un caractère ou un comportement typique d'un individu. 
And then denying self as well, it also means? We repudiate our natural feelings about ourselves, that is our right to run our lives. Et nous rejetons nos sentiments naturels concernant nous-mêmes. We do not have the final right to decide what uh, what we're doing, what, what we're going to do, or where we or where we are going. Et que nous n'avons pas le droit final de décider de ce que nous allons faire ou de là où nous irons. I'm pretty sure for some people they are already saying that they've already gotten the whole word before we have even we before we have even gone deeper. Et je suis sûr qu'il y a certaines personnes qui se disent qu'ils avaient déjà tout compris avant même qu'on aille plus profondément. Uh, can someone please read for us Luke chapter 14? Est-ce que quelqu'un peut lire pour nous Luke verset 14? Verse 27. Verset 27. Luke chapter 14 verset 27. Luke 14 chapter uh, 27. I'll read. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Amen. Um, Luke 14 verset 27 je lis et quiconque ne porte pas sa croix et ne me suit pas ne peut être mon disciple. Amen. Amen. So mm. I'll just like to highlight just a couple of things that were brought to my attention when I read this verse. Non, je veux souligner quelque chose qui vient à mon attention lorsque je lis ce verset. The first one was carry the cross. La première chose c'est porter la croix. Uh, for myself the first time I heard about the word cross itself. La première fois que j'ai entendu parler du mot croix the first thing that came to my mind La chose qui vient à ma pensée, was when Jesus was carrying the cross for him to be crucified. Quand Jésus sa croix quand il allait être Amen. Amen. So therefore, we see that this is where we're getting the definition of what the word cross means. Donc, là où nous allons dans la définition du mot croix, which means to crucify. Qui veut dire crucifier. Meaning to die to ourselves, putting or putting to death our old self, our old life, or, or our old ways. If someone could um, please help me to read Matthew chapter 16 verse 24. Matthew chapter 15 verse 24. Chapter 16 verse 24. Is anyone there? Is there anyone there? Matthew 16, 24, right? Yes. I'll read. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Amen. 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 So you realize that from the verse that we just read? And you realize that the verse that we have just read? It um, indicates the nature before Christ. Cela uh, indique la nature avant Christ. Therefore, now having to help us to understand what we need to do now when we want to follow Christ. Et cela nous aide à, à comprendre ce qu'on doit faire maintenant que nous voulons suivre Christ. Crucifying our old ways. Crucifier notre ancienne vie. Crucifying the life that we were in control. Crucifier la vie que nous contrôlions. Because without having to crucify and to die, Parce que sans crucifier et sans mourir, we're not able to rise in resurrection with Christ. Nous pas nous lever dans la resurrection avec Christ. Amen. Amen. Then the second thing that was brought to my attention, et la seconde chose qui a été apportée à mon attention, was be a disciple. Être un disciple. For me, this word, it has been used quite a lot of times, but I don't think personally I really understood what it meant. Et ce mot a été utilisé tellement de fois, mais je n'avais jamais vraiment compris ce que ça signifiait. And when I look for the definition, as well as the origin, et quand je, vois, je regarde la définition à l'origine, disciple comes from um, a Latin word, disciples, le disciple vient d'un mot latin, disciples, which means a student or a learner or a follower. Et qui veut dire un étudiant, un apprenant ou un suiveur, quelqu'un qui suit, un suiveur. But this word was, was also used back, back, back in the day, in the hundreds and the hundreds. But ce, ce mot était aussi utilisé il y a très, très, très longtemps, dans les années 100. And in the ancient Greek philosophers' time, et, et dans le temps de l'ancienne philosophie grecque, the people who were considered to be disciples, 
Et les personnes qui étaient considérées comme des disciples. Were those who learned by imitating the teacher's entire way of life. C'est ceux qui ont appris en imitant le, la vie de, de l'enseignant. And not just by remembering the spoken words of the teacher. Et pas seulement en se rappelant de ces paroles que l'enseignant le, disait. So you see that a disciple, they learn the ways of the master. Donc nous voyons que les disciples, ils apprennent les voies du maître. Not only does it end in learning, but they also imitate the life. Et, et ils n'apprennent pas seulement, mais ils imitent aussi la vie de celui qui enseigne. This is why we see that Jesus Christ came on earth in flesh. C'est pour cela que nous voyons que Jésus-Christ est venu sur la terre en chair. So that we could learn the ways that we were expected to live. Afin que nous puissions apprendre la manière dont nous, nous, autres, nous sommes attendus de vivre maintenant. He came to leave an example for us. Il est venu vivre en tant qu'exemple pour nous. So that we would not have excuses that Lord. Afin que nous n'avions pas d'excuses pour dire, ah Seigneur. You said we should do this and we should do that. Tu as dit qu'on doit, doit faire ça, on doit faire ceci, on doit faire cela. But then we have never seen you do it. Mais nous ne t'avons jamais vu faire cela. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So now we're just going to go deeper. Alors nous allons aller plus en profondeur. Into what does it really mean to deny ourselves? Donc qu'est-ce que ça veut dire vraiment de renoncer à soi-même? One thing that we should always remember that when we're saying denying ourselves, we're not saying repress what is happening. Donc quand nous disons renoncer à soi-même, ce n'est pas repousser ce qui est en train de se arriver. I think one of the things that we often struggle with as Christians Je pense une des avec nous nous en tant que chrétiens, is to identify that there's a nature in us that is not, like that is at work, but is not supposed to be at work. For example, I'll give an example of emotions. Je vais donner des émotions. One thing is when we're going through a certain emotion, quand nous avons certaines émotions, that is not in line with the emotion that with the emotions that we're supposed to feel. Qui ne sont pas en ligne avec les émotions que nous sommes supposés ressentir. When it comes to the life that the Lord has called us into, quand il s'agit de la vie à laquelle je nous ai appelés, we tend to suppress it. Nous ne pouvons pas supprimer cela. But we don't really address it. Mais nous ne nous nous ne nous ne nous adressons pas à cela réellement. A life of denying ourselves. Une vie d'abandon. Uh, it, it is a life of total surrender to God. C'est une vie de soumission totale à Dieu. Because His Word also says. Parce que sa parole déclare aussi. Come, all ye that are heavy burdened. Venez, à, venez vous tous qui êtes fatigués et chargés. And He also says. Et il a aussi dit. Cast your burdens unto me. Déposez vos fardeaux sur moi. And the thing is, we don't end up having to give our burden unto God. And we try to put it aside and we tend to continue with our life. And when another situation comes up again in our lives, whatever that we did not deal with, that, like whatever we did not prune away or remove or address, nous, 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 nous ne gérons pas, nous n'adressons pas cette situation. We see that it comes back again in our lives. Et nous voyons que cela revient encore dans notre vie. I want us to, um, like as you can see from what I've written here on the PPT. Uh, as, comme vous voyez ce que j'ai écrit ici dans le PPT. It says total surrender. C'est-à-dire, c'est une vie d'abandon total. That does not mean that we have to be partial. Ça veut dire que nous ne devons pas être passifs. Because from the, uh, from the beginning, as, uh, from the beginning, the reason why we were created, parce que depuis le début, la raison pour laquelle nous avons été créés, it was to glorify God. C'était pour glorifier Dieu. For us to effectively do that, alors pour que nous le faisions effectivement, we need to give up our life. Nous avons besoin d'abandonner notre vie. So God becomes the one who is going to take over our lives. Afin que Dieu soit celui qui va venir prendre contrôle de notre vie. Shall we read Romans chapter 6, verse 10 to 11? Lisons Romains 6, verse, uh, chapitre 6, verset 10 à 11. If anyone is there, can you please read for us? Si quelqu'un est là qui peut lire pour nous. It says, For the death that he died, 
die to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> As you can see in verse 11, it says, living for God. Living for God, it means that this is the most important aspect of our lives. So that means whatever whatever we do in our lives is supposed to be evolving around living for God. Whatever is not in tune or aligned for us to live for God effectively, it has to be addressed and we have to address it and have to um, lay it at the cross. Tout ce qui ne contribue pas à vivre pour Dieu doit être, on doit, on doit adresser cela et cela doit être déposé au pied de la croix. This is why we're saying you have to let go of the way of the former life. C'est pour cela que nous devons laisser tomber les habitudes de la vie passée. Because there's nothing that you have, um, you have attained from the former life that you can use for this very current life. C'est parce qu'il n'y a rien de l'ancienne vie que vous pouvez utiliser pour cette nouvelle vie que vous avez commencé à vivre. So there's a change of lifestyle. Donc, il y a un, un changement de style de vie. That means you forget about it. Ce qui veut dire que tu, tu, vous oubliez les choses du passé. If you're going to forget about it, it means it should never come to mind. Et ça veut dire que cela ne doit plus jamais revenir dans notre pensée. From 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. De 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 à 20. I'm going to read. Je vais lire. I don't want to paraphrase too much. Hallelujah. Je veux pas trop paraphraser, alléluia. It says, uh, from ISV, it says, You know that your body is a sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God, don't you? You do not belong to yourselves because you were bought for, uh, for a price. Therefore, glorify God with your bodies. Amen. Amen. So there is a change that happens. Donc, il y a un changement qui arrive. Because now you've also attained a new nature. Parce que là vous avez atteint une nouvelle nature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's almost the same thing as you were very old. Maybe you were 98, 98 years old. Et c'est presque la même chose uh, comme si vous aviez 19 ans. But you start again from kindergarten. Et vous allez commencer encore à nouveau depuis la maternelle. You start again from the basics of how to even eat or how to say a certain word. Vous avez commencé même depuis comment vous apprenez à manger ou à, ou à dire des mots. All right. Um, denying uh, self also means it's a life of total obedience to God. Renoncer à soi-même, ça veut aussi dire que c'est une vie d'obéissance totale à Dieu. You cannot say that you have surrendered yourself to God and do not obey God. Tu peux pas dire que tu as soumis ta vie complètement à Dieu et ne pas obéir à Dieu. Shall we open Ephesians chapter 6 verse 6? Ouvrons Ephésiens chapitre 6 verset 6. As well as Romans 6 verse 16. Ainsi que Romains 6 verset 16. If you're there, may you please uh, read for us. Si vous êtes là, s'il vous plaît, lisez pour nous. Ephésiens 6 6 et Romains 6 16. Uh, Romans, uh, Ephesians 6, verse 6, it reads, Not with eye service as men pleases, but as born servants of Christ, doing the will of God from heart. Amen. Who is um, at Romans 6, verse 16? Romans 6, verse 16. Do you not know that you, you uh, that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin to death or of obedience to righteousness. Amen. 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 So as we've read, we, um, I think we can see and understand Je pense que nous comprendre ce que nous avons lu. that we used to be slaves to sin. So nous avions été, nous étions, uh, pécheurs d'abord. But now we are slaves to righteousness. Mais maintenant, nous avons été sauvés à la justice. Hallelujah. So, Hallelujah. Um, even you also see that Jesus was saying to his disciples, Et Jésus disait à ses disciples, You used to be servants, but now you are my friends. Vous étiez des serviteurs, mais maintenant vous êtes mes amis. Why would he say this? Pourquoi est-ce qu'il dirait ça à ses disciples? Because God is supposed to be our master. 
And God parce is our Dieu, master. Parce que Dieu est supposé être notre maître et il est notre maître. So if God is our master, then that means we have to take the role of a servant. Donc si Dieu est notre maître, nous sommes supposés prendre le rôle de serviteur. If you know what a servant does, Amen. You will see Amen. that when they are told to do something, they do it with, with uh, they do it without questioning the one who is giving the instruction. Et vous allez voir que celui qui a l'instruction, quand il doit dire faire quelque chose, il le fait de la manière dont cela lui a été communiqué. A slave does what he is asked to do without having to ask questions, without excuses. Les, les esclaves font ce qu'ils doivent faire sans poser des questions. We see servants like Hagar. Nous voyons les servantes comme Hagar. When Sarah went to Hagar and told her to go and sleep with the master Abraham, Quand Sarah est partie vers Agar, il a dit d'aller coucher avec le maître Abraham. According to my Bible, euh, selon ma Bible, I don't see anywhere where it says Hagar was pleading and saying, but uh, ma'am, why are you asking me to go and sleep with your husband? Il n'y a pas de partie où Agar contestait, disait, à un moment, pourquoi est-ce que tu me demandes de coucher avec ton mari? She did it anyway. Elle l'a fait, même contre son gré. The same kind of obedience that Hagar showed, although what she did was not right. Cette même obéissance que Hagar a montré, même si ce qu'elle a fait n'était pas juste. It's the same kind of obedience that we are, that is expected from us. C'est la même la même forme d'obéissance que Dieu espère de nous. And we see that nowadays. Et nous voyons que ces jours-ci, we are not really able to effectively obey God. De nos jours, nous ne sommes pas vraiment capables d'effectivement de, obéir à Dieu. Because we're always looking at excuses. We're always making excuses. Parce que nous cherchons toujours des excuses. And the reason why we're making excuses Et la raison pour laquelle nous cherchons des excuses is because we want to do what God is telling us to do by looking at our own abilities and capabilities. Parce que nous voulons faire ce que Dieu nous dit de, de faire de notre propre capacité. Because, for example, if you're in a wheelchair, Par exemple, si vous êtes, and God told you to jump, si vous êtes part, Dieu vous dit de sauter, like everybody else, the first thing that comes to your mind uh, la à votre pensée, is you tell God, but God, you can see that I'm sitting in a wheelchair. How do you expect me to jump? But instead, if, even if we're in a wheelchair, Mais même si tu es dans un fauteuil roulant, and God says jump, et Dieu te dit saute, you say how high. Tu diras, tu dis ça, tu diras combien, combien, comment tu veux que je saute. Whether within you you know that you are not able to do so, même si tu penses que tu n'es pas capable de faire, this is when you go to the Holy Spirit and you tell Him, Holy Spirit, give me the grace to do what the Master has told me to do. C'est là que tu consultes le Saint-Esprit et tu dis, Saint-Esprit, donne-moi la force de faire ce que le Maître me dit de faire. Because as a servant, I should do what my Master says because it is his way or no way. Parce que le, quand tu es serviteur, tu fais ce que ton Maître te dit. C'est soit sa voix, soit rien. There's no plan B, there's no plan C, there's no plan D. Il n'y a pas de plan B, C ou D. There's God's plan and God's instruction. C'est le plan de Dieu, l'instruction de Dieu. When you obey... You see that you're living by faith. Donc nous voyons que nous vivons par la foi. Even the word says that we are to live by faith and not by sight. Même la parole dit que nous devons vivre par la vue et non par la par la foi et non par la vue. We have people like Abraham. May we open Hebrews comme... chapter 11 verse 8. Ouvrons Hébreu verset chapitre 11 verset 8. If you're there, may you please read for us. Si vous êtes là, lisez pour nous s'il vous plaît. Hébreu 11 chapitre verset 8. Hebrews 11, verse 8. Yes. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. Amen. Amen. He did not have to know where he was going or what he was going to eat. He never had to know where he was going to eat or what he was going to eat. Or where he was going to live. Où est-ce qu'il est qu allait vivre? Or where his source of income would come from? Où, où est-ce que sa source de revenu allait venir? For him to obey God. Avant d'obéir à Dieu. But he took everything that he had at that very moment. Mais il a pris tout ce qu'il avait à ce moment même. And he did what the Lord had asked him to do, which was to leave his country. 
Et il a fait ce que le Seigneur lui a dit de faire, qui est de quitter son pays. And go to a place that he will show him. Et je lui ai dit qu'il va lui montrer. Uh, may, uh, can someone please open Revelations chapter 1 verse 3? Est-ce que quelqu'un peut ouvrir Apocalypse 1 verset 3? Revelation chapter 1 verse 3. All right. Beloved, uh, blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Amen. 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 Already we can see from the definition that we said of a disciple. Nous pouvons voir de la définition de disciple. Or how the ancient Greeks used to live. De la manière dont les, les, les anciens grecs vivaient. Was they obeyed, they followed, they did. Ils suivaient, ils faisaient. What the teacher was teaching them or telling them to do. Les enseignants ou leur disaient de faire. Amen. Amen. And before Jesus left, Et avant que Jésus ne s'en aille, he left us something so powerful. Nous a laissé quelque chose de tellement puissant. He left us the spirit. Nous a laissé son esprit. And Romans chapter 1, uh, sorry, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. Et Ephesians chapitre 1. You too have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed in the Messiah, you were sued with the promise, uh, with the promised Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. As, though in, as in John 14, verse 26, can someone please read for us? Et quelqu'un peut lire Jean 14, Jean 14, verset 26? John 14, 26, right? Yes. I'll read. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I say to you. Amen. Amen. And in Romans chapter 8, verse Amen. 14. And in Romans 8, verse 13. It also says, for all who are led by God's Spirit are, God, um, are God's children. Que tous ceux qui sont connus par l'esprit sont fils de Dieu. We say we are God's children, so that means we have to live by the Spirit. Nous disons que nous sommes les fils de Dieu, donc nous devons vivre par le Saint Esprit. So now our desires, they now adhere to the desires of the Holy Spirit. Donc nos, nos désirs deviennent maintenant les désirs du Saint Esprit. Not only do they adhere and align together, et nos, nos désirs sont alignés avec les désirs de l'esprit. Even our own flesh also has to yield to those donc, desires. Nos, Donc même notre chair doit se soumettre à ses désirs. And before Jesus left, he said, the Holy Spirit, he is there to teach us. Et avant que Jésus ne parte, il a dit, le Saint-Esprit est là pour vous enseigner. And we see that in second, um, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, it says that the Holy Spirit reveals to us the mysteries. Et nous voyons dans 1 Corinthiens 2, verset 10, que le Saint-Esprit nous révèle les mystères. The mysteries, which is the word of God. Les mystères qui sont la parole de Dieu. Which cannot be understood by the human mind. I remember that there was a lady that we used to work together with. Je me rappelle qu'il y avait une femme avec qui je travaillais. She said that she was an atheist. Elle a dit qu'elle était une atheist. Okay. And when we were talking, une athée. Elle était une athée. Yes, and when we were talking, she, talk parlons, about, she had read all the books of all the religions. Elle a dit qu'elle a lu tous les livres de toutes les religions. And she also said that she read the Bible cover to cover. Elle a dit qu'elle a lu la Bible de bout en bout. But then, what is in the Word? Alors qu'est-ce qui est dans la parole? Qui ne se manifeste pas dans sa vie? Because there was one element that was missing. Parce qu'il y avait un élément qui manquait. Which is the Spirit. When we're living a life of denying ourselves, when we're living a life of denying ourselves, the manifestation of the transformation 
There's a manifestation that happens through the transformation by the Holy Spirit within us. Il y a une manifestation qui arrive par la transformation du Saint-Esprit en nous. Some of us, we can just read one, one verse. Certains d'entre nous pouvons juste lire un verset. And our lives will never be the same again. Et notre vie ne sera plus jamais la même. Yes, someone else can read the Bible from cover to cover. Quelqu'un peut lire la Bible de bout à bout. But their life remains the same. Mais sa vie va rester la même. Because the Holy Spirit, not only is it making us understand the word, Parce que le Saint-Esprit, il nous fait comprendre la parole, non seulement il nous fait comprendre la parole, the teachings that Jesus left and were also given by God, et les enseignements que Jésus a, a laissé étaient aussi donnés par Dieu, he is there to also guide us using the same truth. Et il est aussi là pour nous guider en utilisant les mêmes outils. According to John 16, verse 13, Uh, selon Jean 16, verset 14. So that means we, we, we consult. We're supposed to consult the Holy Spirit before we move. Ce qui veut dire que nous devons consulter le Saint-Esprit avant d'avancer. Because whatever he's going to let you know, he has received from the Father. Parce que tout ce qui nous fait savoir, il a reçu du Père. That's why we see that now even, like there's a change in our lives. There's a change even in the way that we just look at life as well. Et on constate même qu'il y a un changement dans, le, dans la manière dont nous regardons à la vie. There's a, there's a change in the way that we even live life. Et il y a un changement dans même la façon dont nous vivons dans notre vie. Why? Because the Holy Spirit has been working within us. Parce que le Saint-Esprit a travaillé, il travaille au travers de nous. Together with the Word. Et avec la parole. If you want to effectively live a life of denying yourself, you have to be fruitful. Si vous voulez vivre une vie de renoncement à vous, mais vous devez être fidèle. We are meant vous devez être fruitful. fruitueux. Nous sommes last, appelés à être fruitueux. Last week, we were talking about abiding in Christ. La semaine passée, nous avons parlé de demeurer en Christ. And we spoke on John chapter 15. Nous avons parlé de Jean 15. Which um, is on the vine and the branches. Qui parle de, du cep et des sarments. We cannot be fruitful without the pruning. Nous ne pouvons pas être fructueux sans ces mondages. Uh, shall we read um, uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 to 10, as well as John 15, verse 8? Pouvons-nous lire Colossiens 1, verset 9 à 10 et Jean 15, verset 8? Colossians 1, verse 9 to 10, the Bible yes. reads. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, Do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Amen. John 15 verse 8. Amen. John 15, verse 8, the Bible reads, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Amen. 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 We're not supposed to only bear fruit in a, in a certain period of time. Nous ne pas seulement porter les fruits dans une certaine période du temps. We have to bear fruit all the time. Nous devons porter les fruits tout le temps. Or as the word would also like to put it, in and out of season. Dans et en dehors des saisons. And for us to be able to do so, et pour que nous puissions être capables de le faire, there needs to be daily and continuous pruning of the dead parts. Cela veut dire que nous devons journalement et de façon continue émonder les parties mortes. Because dead parts are like weeds. Parce que les parties mortes c'est comme les herbes. We all know what weeds do if they grow amongst the crops that you have planted. Nous savons tous ce que les herbes font lorsqu'ils poussent autour de ce que nous avons planté. It sucks up all the nutrients that is supposed to go to the plant. Ils absorbent tous les nutriments qui doivent être qui doivent être apportés aux plantes. Which will help it to be fruitful. Qui doit aider les les arbres à être fructueux. Even though if if you don't do so, it the plant like the plant might still be able to be fruitful. Si nous ne le faisons pas, l'arbre peut toujours être fructueux. But it will not reach its maximum capacity. 
Mais cela ne va pas atteindre, la, il va pas atteindre sa capacité euh, maximale. And so we, those dead parts, that weed has to be removed for us to be able to reach our maximum cap, uh, capacity of being fruitful. Donc, ces ces mauvaises herbes doivent être enlevées pour que nous puissions atteindre notre capacité maximale. The more we crucify ourselves, the more the dead parts are removed. Donc, plus nous crucifions, nous nous crucifions nous-mêmes, plus les, les parties mortes sont enlevées. Amen. Shall we read Amen. James chapter 2, verse 17? Lisons Jacques, chapitre 2, verset 17. James chapter 2, verse 17, it says, That's also faith by itself. If it does not have works, it is dead. Amen. Amen. Even in Romans chapter, Romans chapter 2, verse 13, He said, the ones that are considered to be righteous in the eyes of the Lord are not the hearers, but the doers of the word. The works is dead. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Yes. So you need to practice what you learn and what you hear. Donc nous devons here. pratiquer ce que nous apprenons et ce que nous entendons. For the scientists, you know that to every theory there needs to be a practical that will support or back up that theory. Vous savez pour les scientifiques toutes les théories qu'ils qu ont, il doit y avoir des pratiques, des sessions pratiques pour appuyer ces théories. How will we know that the theory is true without the practical? Comment nous allons savoir que la théorie est vraie sans la pratique? So we need to be able to Put it into action what we are learning each and every single day. Sorry, to be fruitful at this maximum. Donc, nous pouvons être fructueux de façon à notre niveau maximal. There's also a change in the behavioral character. Il y a aussi un changement dans notre comportement et dans notre caractère. Shall we read 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 15? Lisons 1 Pierre 1 verse 15. Okay, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 15 now. But as he who is called, who called you, is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Amen. Amen. You see that in ISV it says, instead be holy in every aspect of your life. It does not mean in some, but in every aspect. That means in the way you speak. Ce qui veut dire dans la manière de parler, in the way you think, dans la manière de penser, and in the way you live, et dans la manière de vivre. We are the salt, as the Lord has said. Nous devons faire, nous sommes le sel, comme Dieu a dit. And in Colossians chapter 4, verse 6, so we're not going to have enough time. Et dans Colossiens 4, verse 6. I'm just going to paraphrase it. It says that. Je vais paraphraser. Whatever you say, it should be filled with season, with salt to season. Tout ce que vous dites doit être, euh, doit être assaisonné de sel. Mind you, I'm paraphrasing. Je paraphrase. So you said that whatever you're supposed to say. Donc tout ce que vous êtes supposé dire. It is supposed to season. Cela doit être assaisonné. Wherever Jesus went. Où que Jésus allait. Whatever you spoke. Quel que soit ce qu'il disait. He left life. Il, ce, ce, cela, cela était rempli de vie. The way you think is also very important. De la manière dont vous pensez est très important. And as we learned a couple of weeks ago, Et ce, nous avons appris quelques semaines passées, that uh, we are um, we are comp uh, we are composed of three components. Nous avons appris que nous sommes composés de trois choses, which is the uh, the spirit, the soul, and the body. Qui sont le corps, l'âme et l'esprit. Whatever is in the spirit. Tout ce qui est dans l'esprit, it will be communicated to the soul or delivered to the soul. Cela sera communiqué. Cela sera and, communiqué à l'âme. La, and your mind is where, the, uh, and where your soul is is where your mind is. Et c'est là où notre pensée est dans notre dans notre âme. So whatever is in your mind, it also comes um, out through Donc, uh, notre... through your actions. Et tout ce qui est dans notre pensée, c'est cela qui vient. À la manifestation en action. Therefore, you see now the importance of changing the way that you think. Donc, nous voyons l'importance de changer la manière dont nous pensons. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Philippiens 3, verset 8. It also gives us an example on what we should 
set our mind on, what we should always be thinking of. Nous nous donnons l'exemple de ce sur quoi nous devons fixer notre pensée, c'est ce sur quoi nous devons toujours penser. Amen. Amen. Have you ever um, heard the saying that says thinking out, um, thinking out loud? Avons-nous déjà entendu l'expression penser à haute voix? When you're thinking out loud, it means that you're saying what you've been thinking. Quand vous pensez à haute voix, ça veut dire que vous, vous disiez ce que vous pensez. Without the intention of probably maybe verbally saying it. Sans, sans, sans l'intention de, 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 de penser verbalement. So the way that we think affects the way that we speak. Donc la manière de penser affecte la manière de parler. As well as the way that we think also affects the, the, um, the way that we live. Et la manière de, dont nous pensons affecte la manière dont nous vivons. Can someone please read for us 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 8. Est-ce que quelqu'un peut lire pour nous 1 Pierre chapitre 3 verset 8? 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 8. Finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart and a humble mind. Amen. Amen. Here is just an, um, an example of how we, we are expected to live. Donc, c'est juste un exemple de comment nous, sommes, nous devons vivre. Uh, to be compassionate with each other and to love one another. Avoir la compassion l'un envers l'autre et aimer, nous aimer les uns les autres. A life of humility. Un amour pour l'humilité. I mean, for most of us before Christ, Pour la plupart de nous avant Christ, pride was what took over our lives. La l'orgueil est ce qui dominait dans notre vie. And our lives ended up having to revolve around that pride. Et notre vie tournait autour de cet orgueil. So you see, everything else was affected. Donc toutes les autres choses étaient affectées. Hallelujah. So we Hallelujah. really need to. Uh, yes, thank you. So we really need to get to that point of if we're giving ourselves to Christ, if we're surrendering to Christ. Je veux soumettre à Christ. There needs to be a change. We need to see. Il doit y avoir un changement. Devons voir. That you're no longer living for yourself, but living for God. Que nous ne vivons plus pour nous, mais même nous vivons pour Dieu. There are um, um, a couple of things that you will need. These are just some, but not all of them. Il y a certaines choses dont nous aurons besoin alors dans ce cas. For you to live an effectively, um, an effective life of denying yourself. Pour vivre une vie effective de renoncement à soi-même. The first and most important thing is salvation. La première et la plus importante, c'est le salut. This is the beginning of surrendering yourself. C'est le début de renoncer à soi-même, de se soumettre. This is the beginning of crucifying yourself. C'est le début de se crucifier soi-même. Because what you're saying is, God, whatever it was before, now we are going to leave it. Parce que vous disiez, Seigneur, tout ce qui était là avant, maintenant nous allons laisser cela. In pursuit of the new life that you're about to give me. Pour le pour l'intérêt de la nouvelle vie que tu es sur le point de me donner. And the second thing is discipleship. Et le, la seconde chose c'est le discipleship. Discipleship makes up the um, the uh, the components of a foundation. Le 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 discipleship vient affermir notre notre fondation. If we read in Matthew chapter four towards the end. Si nous nous lisons dans Matthieu cinq jusqu'à la fin. We see that Jesus was calling his first disciples. From chapter 5 to chapter 9. From verse 5 to 9. The disciples were with Jesus. The disciples with Jesus. The disciples of Jesus. Sitting under him, learning as well as watching him live. And they were sitting at his feet and they were watching him live. And then in Matthew chapter 10, Et dans Matthew, Matthew 6, Jesus sends them out. Jésus les a envoyés. So you see that this is a very important part in our Christian life. It is like the milk for the body. Comme le lait pour le corps. I know some people will say, ah, but now I'm five years old or even 30 years old. Right now, I'm 23 and I'm still drinking milk. Because milk contains calcium that is needed for my bones. And this makes up the structure of my body. Amen. And I know that some of us, we don't really like discipleship. 
but is but it is important for us to go through it. vraiment important pour nous de passer par le discipula. Just as the other apostles that came after Jesus had gone. Après que les autres les autres disciples qui sont venus après Jésus sont partis. The Paul and the Timothy. Donc Paul et Timothée. Before they went out, they also had their time of being discipled. Avant même qu'ils ne soient envoyés, ils avaient aussi leur temps de discipula. To those that, uh, to those that they were accountable to or answer to. Amen. Now Amen. we go to the food, which is the daily meditation of the word. Maintenant nous allons à la nourriture qui est la méditation quotidienne de la parole. Amen. Can someone please read Amen. for us? Uh, Peter one verse three. De Pierre verset trois. Joshua one. Amen. Amen. Second Peter one verse three. The Bible reads. <clears throat> According as his divine power has given us has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Amen. Amen. Through the knowledge of him who called us. And according to John chapter 1, verse 1. Et selon Jean, vers, chapitre 1, verset 1. The one who called us is the word. Celui qui nous a appelé est la parole. Right now I'm going to read Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Je vais lire maintenant Josué 1, verset 8. I'm, I'm, I'm reading from the ISV version. Je lis de la version ISV. And it says, this set of instructions is not to cease being part of your conversations, meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to carry out everything that is written in it for then you will prosper and succeed amen amen ce livre de la loi ne sera que de ta de ta bouche médite le jour et nuit afin de s'agir fidèlement selon ce qui est écrit c'est ainsi que tu auras le succès dans toutes tes entreprises amen amen the word of god a set of instructions donc la parole de dieu c'est un un ensemble d'instructions and in second peter chapter 1 verse 3 it says we've been given everything Et dans 2 Pierre, chapitre 1, verset 3, il dit, nous avons reçu tout ce qui participe. Now we need to live a godly life. Pour, à la, pour participer à la, à, la, à, la, à la piété. It is the word. C'est la parole. Amen? Amen. How will the Holy Spirit make you understand the instructions that you have not read? Comment est-ce que le Saint-Esprit peut te faire comprendre les instructions que tu n'as pas lues? Amen. The word is like food. Amen. La parole, c'est comme la nourriture. You're not only supposed to only take it on the day that you have Bible study, or maybe you will have prayers, or maybe for um for Sunday. Nous avons seulement besoin de de manger la parole les jours de l'étude biblique ou quand on a prière ou les dimanches. But you take the food daily. You don't skip a day. Et nous mangeons nous mangeons tous les jours. Nous ne nous ne sautons pas de jours. Some of us do not even skip meals. Donc nous ne nous quand nous ne sautons pas nos repas. Some of us do three times you have, uh, in a day. You have to eat three times with two to three times snacks in between. So in the same way, we're supposed to we're supposed to look at the word for ourselves as well. We are not to miss a day. Nous devons pas rater un jour. We are not to miss a meal. Nous ne voulons pas rater un repas. Even if there's extra, it, it can never be enough, like too much food. Même s'il y en a en surplus, ça ne peut jamais être trop, trop de nourriture pour nous. Because according to 2 uh, Timothy 16, 2 uh, Timothy chapter 3, sorry, verse 16 to 17. Selon 2 Timothy 3, verset 16 à 17. I'm just going to read briefly. It says, all scripture is God breath and is useful for teaching, for uh, reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good action. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you see that even in other um, versions, it says to rebuke, to correct. Même dans les autres versions, nous voyons que la parole dit pour corriger, pour convaincre. 
How can we be corrected from our old way of living into the new way of living without having to go through the instructions that we've been given? Comment nous pouvons être corrigés de notre ancienne manière de vivre si nous ne passons pas par les instructions, si nous ne suivons pas les instructions que nous recevons? Without reading the manual that we've been given. Sans lire les, le manuel que nous avons, nous avons reçu. I don't believe that any of us came into this life knowing what to do. Je pense que quelqu'un est venu à, est venu à la vie sachant quoi faire. But for every situation, Mais pour toutes les situations, for every difficulty, pour toutes les difficultés, it, we have a solution that is in this word. Nous avons une solution qui est dans la parole. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a need for the renewal of the mind. Et il y a besoin pour le renouvellement de l'intelligence. And as I heard the other time, as you were saying, et comme l'ancien disait la dernière fois, he said, renew of the mind will help us to discern the will of God. Il disait que le renouvellement de l'intelligence va nous aider à discerner la volonté de Dieu. We are all called to glorify God. Nous sommes tous appelés à glorifier Dieu. But the way that we glorify God is different. Mais la manière dont nous glorifions est différente. You have to find your own way of glorifying God. According Donc, nous to... Nous devons trouver notre... Nous devons trouver notre propre manière de glorifier Dieu. According to what God has called you for or into. Selon ce, selon ce que Dieu nous a appelé à faire. Renewal of mind, it affects our lifestyle. Et le renouvellement de l'intelligence, il affecte notre, pense, notre, notre style de vie. Renewal of mind also gives birth to purpose for us finding our purpose. Et le renouvellement de l'intelligence nous aide à découvrir notre, notre but. Hallelujah. Amen. Personal intimate time. Un temps personnel d'intimité. Some like to skip this one. Certains veulent, Amen. Veulent pas, on veut. Can someone please read for us Colossians chapter 4 verse 2? Quelqu'un peut lire Colossians 4 verset 2? Yeah. Colossians 4 verse 2 Continue earnestly in prayer being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Towards the end of last year Dans la fin de l'année passée um, One of our brothers shared something up to now. It's still healing me a little bit. Un de nos frères a partagé quelque chose qui continue de me toucher même jusqu'à présent. He said for every creature that has been created Il dit que pour toute écriture, there's an environment that was that, that was also created for the creature to live in. Il y avait aussi un environnement créé pour le, le prédicateur de, de vivre dans cet environnement. And out of that environment that they were created to live in, et en dehors de cet environnement qui avait été créé, that creature will surely die. Cette, cette créature allait sûrement mourir. We were created to be in Christ. Nous avons été créés pour être en Christ. To abide in Christ. Pour demeurer en Christ. We were speaking about abiding in Christ last week. Nous avons parlé de demeurer en Christ la semaine passée. Jesus in Luke chapter 5 verse 16. Et dans Luc verset, chapitre 5 verset 15. It says, God, um, I mean, Jesus often retrieved himself. He withdrew himself. Jésus se, 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 se reprimandait lui-même. To a lonely place. Se, à un endroit, il, il est parti à un endroit, euh, euh, un endroit solide. Euh, solide. And as we like to say, if Jesus could did it, et si Jésus pouvait le faire, why can we not also did it? Hallelujah. Nous ne pouvons pas le faire nous-mêmes. Hallelujah. If Jesus was able to take the time to retrieve himself, Oh, si Jésus avait pris le temps de se retirer lui-même dans un endroit, whether he was in the midst of still serving God, alors qu'il était au milieu de, de ses, healing people, de, de guérir les teaching gens, people, euh, prier pour les gens, he found it so very important to often. Il a trouvé vraiment vraiment important. Hallelujah. In different versions, Hallelujah. they say. Constantly, in other versions, they say often. In other uh, in versions, they also say, uh, they also say frequently. Dans dans certaines versions, il y a le mot constant, souvent et fré fréquemment. Not suddenly. Not sometimes. 
pas, pas parfois. But constantly? Mais constamment. But often? Souvent. Frequently? Fréquemment. We should not try, like we should not be comfortable ne devons pas être uh, confortable with doing sometimes en faisant en, en faisant certaines de manière certaines fois hallelujah mm. because this is the moment that we are retrieving the nutrients for the day parce que c'est le moment que où nous 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 retrouvons les 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 nutriments dont nous avons besoin we are retrieving nous the nutrients for the day ce dont nous avons besoin pour la journée we are retrieving what we need for us to be able to do the instruction that we are We've been given by God. Therefore, the importance of personal intimate time. Donc, c'est vraiment important d'avoir un temps d'intimité personnelle. As you can see, I I mentioned daily meditation on its own as well as personal uh, personal intimate time. J'ai aussi parlé de la la méditation per, uh, quotidienne. I know they Et sound similar, but they're not the same. Je sais que c'est similaire, mais c'est pas la même chose. Hallelujah. Shall we uh, Hallelujah. look at this pyramid? Comment nous regarder à cette pyramide? This is a pyramid that I learned through um, high school. C'est une pyramide que j'ai appris au collège. Uh, our reverend, uh, our school reverend used to always talk about this pyramid. Le reverend de notre, de notre école parlait toujours de cette pyramide. So whatever is at the bottom, it gives birth to whatever is on top. Donc tout ce qui est en bas donne naissance à ce qui est en haut. As you can see, good thoughts produce good action. Good actions produce good habits. Good habits produce good character. Good character produces good destiny. So for now, I'm going to change, uh, I'm going to substitute the word good with godly. Donc, je vais changer le, le mot bien, bon, avec euh, euh, Dieu. Godly thoughts give birth to godly actions. Donc, les, les pensées pieuses donnent naissance aux actions pieuses. Godly actions give birth to godly habits. Les actions pieuses donnent naissance aux habitudes pieuses. Godly habits give, um, give birth to godly character. Les, euh, les habitudes pieuses donnent naissance aux caractères pieux. Godly character to godly destiny. Et le caractère pieux donne naissance à une destinée pieuse qui glorifie our, Dieu. Our race, at the end of the day, as Christians. Donc, à la fin, euh, au bout du compte, en, en tant que chrétien. The end of the race, that is. La fin de la, le fin, la fin de la course. Is for us to be like Christ, the total and exact representation. C'est que nous sommes comme Christ, que nous nous sommes la représentation totale et exacte de Christ. And with that, we're just going to look at a couple of um, case studies. Et nous allons regarder à certains cas d'études. We see that Jesus before, um, one of the most important, of course, is Jesus Christ. L'un des plus importants cas, c'est Jésus Christ. He's our teacher and he's our master. Il est notre enseignant et notre maître. And we are to imitate him. Et nous devons l'imiter. Before he came here on earth, avant qu'il ne vienne ici sur la terre. The Bible says that he was with God. La Bible dit qu'il était avec Dieu. Hallelujah. He was with Alléluia. God. So therefore, his exact representation according to Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Donc il était avec Dieu et selon Hébreu 1 verset 3. Was seen here on earth. Son, son, les autres représentations de Dieu étaient vues ici sur terre. He was God in the flesh. Il était Dieu fait chair. He was manifesting the nature of the one who sent him. Il manifestait la nature de celui qu'il a envoyé. Manifesting the nature of the one who, uh, whom he was with. Et il manifestait la nature de celui avec qui il était. And the same goes to the 12 disciples. Et le second exemple, c'est les 12 disciples. You see, even when people wanted to crucify Jesus Christ, même quand les gens voulaient crucifier Jésus Christ, they could not tell him apart from the disciples. For the rest of the disciples. Ils ne pouvaient pas le différencier des They had to get help from Judas for them to identify which one was Jesus. Ils ont dû se faire aider par Judas pour définir qui était Jésus parmi eux. Because of now, even their character, it had also become the same as the one Jesus had. Parce qu'ils avaient même le même caractère que Jésus. They were now living the same way that Jesus was living. 
Il vivait de la même manière que Jésus vivait. They were now speaking the same way that Jesus was speaking. Il parlait comme Jésus parlait. Therefore, could not be differentiated. Donc, il ne pouvait pas être différencié de, de Jésus. Alléluia. The same thing goes for us. Et de la même la même chose est valable pour nous. Because we are meant to manifest Him. Parce que nous sommes nous sommes appelés à le manifester. Alléluia. Alléluia. And the word says the word is awaiting for the manifestation of the children of God. Et le monde attend avec euh, grand désir le, la manifestation des fils de Dieu. Alléluia. So that means we're manifesting God's nature to the world. Ce qui veut dire que nous manifestons la nature de Dieu au monde. We're manifesting Christ. Nous manifestons Christ. We're going to manifest Christ without emptying ourselves and allowing Christ to fill us. Et nous ne pouvons pas le faire sans nous vider et, et permettre à Christ de nous remplir. We cannot manifest our uh, we cannot manifest Christ in us without having to totally give up um, to give ourselves to Christ. Et nous ne pouvons pas manifester Christ sans nous soumettre totalement à Christ. Without obeying God and his sans word. Sans obéir à Dieu et sa parole. Without living by the spirit. Sans vivre son, par l'esprit. Without being fruitful. Sans être fructueux. How will they know that we are his children? Comment est-ce qu'ils vont savoir que nous sommes leurs fils? It says Dieu? you shall know them by their fruits. Parce que la Bible dit que vous les connaîtrez par leurs fruits. Fruits that come from our actions. Les fruits qui viennent de nos actions. That is the result of what we have learned. Et qui sont le résultat de ce que nous avons what appris. Seen, ce que nous what avons we have vu. Seen, what we have heard. Et ce que nous avons entendu. And in conclusion, my time is running out. Et en conclusion. Um, we have to remember that our lives are for the glory of God. When it comes to this, we have to be intentional about training our flesh. So that Christ may, um, may be um, manifested. Even Paul would say that he beats his own flesh. So that he can do what he wanted to do. Afin qu'il puisse faire ce que Dieu veut qu'il fasse. Which is to live by the Spirit. Et ça, c'est vivre par l'Esprit. And the more that you deny yourself, et plus vous renoncez à, à vous-même, the, the more Christ is manifested. Plus Christ est manifesté. And the closer you are to attain holiness. Et plus vous êtes prêt de parvenir à la sainteté. Which is at the end of our race. Qui est à la fin de notre course. Hallelujah. I know that Hallelujah. times will get hard. Je sais que le, le temps est fini. Les, les temps vont devenir durs. I know that times will get tough. Je sais que les temps seront durs, seront difficiles. One time you might find yourself being stricken. Parfois nous allons nous allons nous voir euh, vraiment dans being une situation difficile. Être en être en prison. Being shipwrecked. Mais. Being shipwrecked. Alléluia. Alléluia. And just um, as an encouragement, être naufragé. Être naufragé. Merci. Yes, just to help us, I'm just going et to je... read uh, Jeremiah chapter 42 from verse 1 to 6. Donc je vais lire uh, Jérémie 42, verset 1 à 6, pour nous encourager. I'm going to read. It says, Then all the military, um, military leaders, Kariah's son Jonathan, Hoshiah's um, son Jezaniah, and all the people from the least to the greatest approached Jeremiah. They told Jeremiah the prophet, Please listen to what we have to ask of you. Pray to the Lord your God for us and for all the survivors. Indeed, only a few of us remain out of many, as you can see. Pray that the Lord your God may inform us as to how we should live and what we should do. Jeremiah the prophet told them, I have heard, and I'm going to pray to the Lord your God, just as you have requested. Whatever the Lord answers, I'll tell you. I won't withhold anything from you. Verse 5. Then they told Jeremiah, may the Lord be a true and faithful witness against us if we don't do everything that the Lord your God tells us through you. Now, verse 6. Whether it seems good or bad, we will obey the Lord our God to whom we sent you so it may go well for us. Indeed, we will obey the Lord our God. In other versions, it says, when it seems favorable or unfavorable. Amen? Amen. Yes. Okay. So you see, already they had made up their mind that no matter what was to come, they were going to obey God. So they had already made up their mind that no matter what was to they would obey God. No matter what, they'd made up their mind so that, that they were going to do what God had told them would, had, would tell them to do. They would go where 
God wanted them to go. Ils iront là où Dieu leur a dit d'aller. And Philippians chapter 3 verse 12 to 14. Et Philippiens chapitre 3 verset 12 à 16. We all know it says not that I have already obtained this obtained it this goal of being Christ like or have already been made perfect but I actively press on so that I may take hold of that perfection for which Christ Jesus took hold of me and made me his own brothers and sisters I do not consider that I have made it my own yet but one thing I do forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead I pray Press on toward the goal to win the heavenly prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I would like just to encourage us. I know that um, it was prophesied into this year that it will be a year of abundance. I'm sure some of us will look into the year and say, but God, already how is this supposed to be a year of abundance with the way that the year has started? Et je sais qu'avec comment l'année a commencé, certains vont se dire, mais comment est-ce que cette année est l'année de l'abondance? But I'm here to tell you. Mais je suis là pour vous dire. The Lord said you never leave nor forsake us. Le Seigneur a dit qu'il ne va jamais nous laisser ni nous abandonner. He's there to help us in every situation. Il est là pour nous aider dans toutes les situations. Even when we're not even able to do it ourselves. Même lorsque nous ne pouvons pas le faire de nous-mêmes. He is ready to help us to cross each and every single hurdle that we may, uh, we may face. Il est là pour nous aider à, à traverser toutes les, tous les, tous les, les batailles que nous allons pouvoir rencontrer. Because he wants us to reach the end of this. Parce qu'il veut que nous, nous atteignions la fin de cela. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now I'm just going to call upon our PE just to pray for us. That we may be patient. Le président des aideurs, des, des anciens pour prier pour nous. That is going to press on and afin que nous puissions euh, persévérer. And never get discouraged, no matter what we are facing. Et, et ne jamais être découragé, peu importe ce que nous allons so rencontrer. So that we are able to attain the price that the Lord has for us in the future, que nous puissions in front remporter, of us. Afin que nous puissions remporter le prix que Dieu a pour nous dans le futur, devant nous. Oui. Father, let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to thank you for the wonderful word which I've heard this afternoon. It has come at the right time. It has come at the right opportunity. Now, as your children, we are ready to be transformed. We are ready to be, to deny ourselves for the sake of saving you, Jesus Christ. Father, you have seen your children, how they are committing their lives unto you. You have seen your children, how they are opening their hearts and they are longing for you to be with them. Father, I pray may you be with them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for the total protection upon their life. Mm -hmm. Father, I pray for the replacing of everything which have been lost as they are denying themselves to save you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Father, I pray to minister to them in a special way and to take them from one level to another level in their life, spiritual life in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we trust upon your name because we are faithful God, you are a living God. God who never denies us. God who always rescues us when we are at the point of need. Now you have seen your children how they are also committing their sources into your kingdom. For the sake of your work to go ahead, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for you to restore them, for you to bless them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I will send the commitment, no matter how tough they are in, they're facing this situation, no matter how hard the situation is in Wuhan or in China or in every part of their life. But for the sake of you, they have removed themselves, they have put their life and to cross for the sake of serving you, Jesus Christ. Father, I pray, therefore, may you continually, or continue say, Father, be with them in Jesus' mighty name, Father. I pray for you to change their spiritual life. I pray for you to pray to change their physical life. I pray, Father, to change their moral life. I pray them to change their characters in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for the pruning of any other branch which is drawing them backward in Jesus' name. I pray for anything which is any weight which is putting them up backward or the weight which is putting them down in the mighty name of Jesus. 
You're going to set them free forever. I'm going to set them free from any other total weight in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I trust and I believe and we see belief and we have confidence that God, you have received our prayers and you are preparing us for the better destinies for our destinies are in your, in your hands. Now, Father, I commit in your hands the, any other person in the breast safe. May you, Father, shape their destinies because you know their future in the name of Jesus. Whatever the doom which was upon their life, Father, I pray for the total reversal and upon their lives that way now. Shape their destinies in the mighty name of Jesus. Give them the bright future as they're denying, denying themselves unto you. Give them the right direction as they're denying themselves unto you. Give them best opportunities upon their lives as they've denied themselves to save you. Give them the best, uh, best performance, best maximum performance upon their lives as they're denying themselves unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray against any spirit of condemnation. Whatever things I've done, whatever things we've done in the past, I pray that we are not condemned, but we are being taken back into our kingdom, in our kingship, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for taking us back into our royal, royal, royal house, in the priesthood, because we are children who have accepted you, Jesus Christ, our personal savior. In Jesus' name, Father. Now I commit in your hands any other person who has a problem now. I pray for the total transformation, total reversal of the problem in the mighty name of Jesus. Whether it's academic, is the one who's making them pull down in the spiritual life. Father, I pray for the total reversal in the mighty name of Jesus. They're not going to be the same. I pray against any other thing which was pulling them down, making them not understand you or not trust in you in the mighty name of Jesus. We are crucifying or committing unto the cross any other hardship which we should be facing now. Enlighten the yoke in Jesus' mighty name of fire. Shape their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Prepare better destinies of their life in the mighty name of Jesus. And strengthen mm -hmm. our faith on every day and in everything which we are doing. In every endeavor, strengthen our faith in Jesus' mighty name, Father. Mm -hmm. We give glory and honor to our name. Bless your children, uplift their lives. Strengthen their children, your children. Make them a light and sword of the world. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray. Amen. Amen.